We're using nothing but three quarter inch material and you'll need two seven foot boards by at least five inches wide. There's a cut list in the plans. You definitely wanna start off with something with straight grain and stable with no knots. I've got some beautiful oak here that's gonna work perfect for this. The plans will be in metric and imperial. So the first thing I need to do is cut two rough pieces for the backrest and glue them up. We're gonna glue these two pieces together for a nice thick backrest. This is cut over size and we'll cut it down to size after the glue dries. Just double them up and throw on some clamps. We want to line up the edge here so we can reference this off the table saw later. So do the best that you can to get these boards lined up. Next up, I'm going to cross cut and rip the four leg pieces. I'm going to make them longer than what they need to be so I can finesse the seat height and angle at the very end. So now we're gonna cut the two seat sides and then the two seat supports. It's critical that the two seat sides are the exact same length and the two seat supports are the exact same length. So I'm gonna cross cut first and then rip two seat sides over at the table saw and then do another cross cut, rip two seat supports over at the table saw. If you do the ripping first, make sure you have a stop block set up so you have equal length pieces. Now we're gonna cut three pieces for the seat slats. We're gonna start here at the miter saw and then rip them to width. So we've got three pieces. We're gonna resaw this into six pieces. I'm just using a little bench top bandsaw for this. I'm not even gonna use a fence. I drew a line right down the middle and I'm just going to cut right on that line and freehand it. The rough side of this is going to be the underside of the chair. If you care about how that is going to look, you can go ahead and sand this down. I do care about the underside of the chair, so I'm gonna sand it down, get rid of those rough bandsaw marks, and then the top side, I'm gonna take over to the router and round over all the edges. Your backrest glue up should be dry by this time, so we're gonna cut it to width now, but don't cut it to length yet. And then we're also going to cut to width our two leg supports. Our backrest and our outside leg support need to be the exact same length. So I'm gonna clean up one edge here and then set up a stop block, cut these two pieces. And then I can cut our inside leg support to the dimensions in the plans. On the two big legs, we need to drill two different size holes. Ideally, you'd wanna do this at the drill press, but if you don't have a drill press, you can make your own drill guide. This is a square block. I drew an X on both sides, and if you come through one side and you come out the middle of the X on the other side, you know you are square. Might take you a couple of times, but you can use this to allow you to drill straight up and down. I've got both of my boards clamped and I'm gonna drill them at the same time to make sure the holes are in perfect position on each board. Stick my bit in there, I got a brad point bit. And there we go. We're still on the same step, but we need to drill two smaller holes in here. And these holes don't go all the way through. So you wanna mark your top and then the front edge of the board. And then we're gonna drill these two holes on the inside. So from here, I will measure and mark my two holes. So the bigger hole is gonna to be towards the front of the board and the smaller hole is going to be towards the back of the board. And these are going to be drilled from the inside. So inside, inside. So I've got a piece of tape on my drill bit and then I know to drill down until I hit that tape and that is the right depth of the bit coming out of my guide block.
And there's one. And there's two. They didn't go all the way through. And if this is the outside of the board, it's gonna angle back this way and the seat's gonna come out here. So we need to cut off a little bit down here. So, got my protractor and I'm just going to draw my line on here and then cut that off. We will likely have to cut off even more when we're all done because these legs are a little bit long. I got the two seat sides, I got them ganged up so I can drill them both at the same time. This hole is right in the middle and then a little from the bottom edge here. So I'm gonna set that in there. There we go. And then we draw a smaller hole in the back. We're on step nine with the two smaller legs and we'll drill those two holes. There's one, and there's two. We're gonna round over this edge, so I'm just going to take a Forstner bit that's the same width and use that to draw my circle. Cut that off on the bandsaw or sand it down. So I need to run a groove in the middle of this board. So on the opposite side, I drew my stop point and my end point. Over here at my router table, I have the edge of this end of the fence lined up with this edge of the bit. And I have the edge of this end of the fence lined up with the other side of the bit. If I put a block up against the bit, you can see that the, these two edges meet perfectly here. If I move the block to the other side, these two meet perfectly over here. You could also do this with pencil marks, but I'm gonna use the edge of my fence. So on the, my board has a start point and an end point. So I know I can plunge down and then line up those two lines and then go until those two lines Hits. I'm going to do this in multiple passes, so it's going to take uh, a few times, but that is going to give me my stop groove on there without any stop blocks. Got to back up just a bit. And then go forward. And there we go. And just like the big legs, we'll cut that angle down at the foot. And again, this is probably gonna be too long, so we can always cut more off later. Now we're gonna take our backrest and we're gonna cut out a little swoop out of there for comfort. If you have a buddy, you can have one person bend a ruler while the other person draws a line on there. I am just going to try to freehand this and connect the dots. And then we'll take this over to the bandsaw and cut that out. Again, I'm using my benchtop bandsaw for this, which has the capacity to cut this. If your bandsaw, for whatever reason, cannot cut this thick of material, you can always use 80 grit sandpaper in your random orbit sander or hand file that swoop in there. So we have our two big legs and our backrest. You'll notice that the backrest is not as tall as the legs. That is on purpose. That's a design aspect of this. And then we have the outside leg support here, which is gonna get glued here. The backrest would be flush with the back of the legs. This outside leg support will be flush with the front of the legs, something to keep in mind. So I'm gonna put some glue on there and then clamp it up. Then once it's clamped, I will then drill my holes for my dowel joinery. There are lots of ways to join this together. On my other channel, the main channel where I made this, I used a floating tenon. That's a great one and you don't see the tenon coming out the end like you're gonna see here. You could also use blind dowels where the dowels don't go all the way through, but then you need a jig or you need dowel centers to do that. So there are 
plenty. There, there's, there's a dozen ways to glue this up and reinforce those joints. I am picking what I think is the easiest way. And then if you want to do another way, you most certainly can. This is a little trickier because it's flush with the top and not the back. Not that tricky. So on this one, I gotta make sure I'm drilling fairly straight so I don't blow out the top or the bottom. So then I can fill that with some glue, pound in some dowels. Okay, now we're assembling the rear legs. I'm using glue and the joinery of your choice. Again, I'm gonna use through dowels. I got my line marked on here. Gonna line that up with that. Gonna use these spring clamps to just temporarily hold it in place and then clamp that down. Just like before, we can drill two holes here, two holes here, and then stuff that with some dowels. Make sure that bottom's out. So this is going to be our seat right here. These slats are going to fit in here. And as it sits, as it sits, as it sits right now, this is perfectly flat. For comfort, we want a little curve in there. So before we attach all these things together, we're gonna take these two pieces to the bandsaw and cut out a little curve. Find roughly the middle here, come down a little bit, and then I'm just gonna draw a straight line from the center to the edge. And then with sanding, we'll make that a nice fine curve. We'll do that with both pieces and we'll cut this off at the bandsaw. I got mine taped together so I can cut them both at the same time. I sanded that down to get that nice smooth curve. I had them ganged up together. So I'll untape it. We got two exact pieces with a nice little curve in there for comfort. So now we are going to glue up the seat. So now we're gonna glue the two seat sides and the seat supports together. You got the small hole in the back and then you got the big hole towards the bottom. And just like before, we're gonna glue clamp and doll it. So now we're gonna pre-drill all the holes and the slats. I got a bit with a countersink built into it. If you don't have this type of bit, you will want to countersink the holes so the screws sit below the surface. We've got the holes pre-drilled in the slats. Now we're gonna pre-drill the holes into the supports underneath. A deck of playing cards comes in really handy for this to try to find the perfect spacing between each one. I find for this, it is seven playing cards. I like getting the blank ones because I can also write notes on them. So I got seven play, and then I've got a big block here to reference the front so they all line up nice and neat. So I'm gonna stick a deck of playing cards here. I'm gonna stick a deck, not a full deck. I'm gonna stick seven playing cards over here. and then I can pre-drill. And now I have to screw this in so that I can get the spacing for the next one. I'm using brass screws because I like the way they look. You don't want to use a drill with brass screws. They will strip very fast. Stick the cards there for the next one. And drill. So we have the three major pieces done. I went ahead and sanded everything. I think sanding for a chair is really important. It should feel smooth to the touch. And then you kind of want to sand over all the sharp corners and edges. 
you tend to fidget with your chair a lot when you're sitting in it. So you want all parts of the chair to feel good to the hands, even underneath, because as you're sitting on it, you know, you're probably gonna grab it and you're gonna, you're gonna play with it and, and stuff. You want it to feel good. So sanding is really important. So now we need to cut four steel pins. I'm gonna do this with a hacksaw. If you have an angle grinder, it's gonna be so much easier and so much quicker. So now we're going to epoxy those steel pins on the inside of the big legs. These holes are all the way through. So we just pound this down until it's flush on the other side. Put a little wax on the pin, put a nylon washer on there. Same with the other one. Put a little nylon washer on there. Now we should be able to bend this in enough to pop that on there. One. Get on there. Two. And there we go. And then the big steel rod that holds everything together. So I just got two blocks to hold this up temporarily. Put some nylon washers on these guys. And we should be able to angle this in there and pop this into place. And now we gotta put the steel dowel all the way through here. We're gonna do that on the floor. So this is the piece that holds it all together and we just gotta pound it through and line up all four holes. There's one. There's two. There's three. And there's four. And there, that is a chair. You can cut the legs down to get it to the height that you want. And if you cut the back legs a little bit more, you can get more of an angle out of this seat. And then the backrest needs a little bit more shaping. My back hits that hits that curve right there. You can use a file or some 80 grit sandpaper. For a weight test, my brother and I are gonna stand on it together. We weigh 420 pounds. I think this is gonna hold it no problem. All right, Daniel, go ahead and step on here with me. <laughs> Jump up and down. <laughs> 420 pounds. No problem. One of the things that you could do for the steel dowel here, cut it a little short and then fill that little gap with epoxy, colored epoxy. I wish I would have added finish before putting it together because it's a little more difficult now. So a couple things to keep in mind. There'll be plans for this down below. That is it. As always, be safe, have fun, stay passionate and make something.